Here we are in Kotara. 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 E nō reira, e ngā tātou whānau, e toru, e toru rau, e waru te kau, kei roto. E tēnā, e tēnā te whānau, e te whānau taratahi, a land-based training, Hara mai, hara mai, nau mai o tēnā i te kaupapa a Lakes 380. I tēnā te mihi, tēnā te mihi. I te whaka hara mai, hara mai, nau mai e hoki mai rā i te kai koutou. Ki te mai moana o te kei roto, kei roto o onoke. He onoke E te te mai ti tēnā, o wera rapa moana. Ara, kei ko nei rā, e re re rā, e te wairua o te aua rua mahanga. Ara, e re re rā, kei ko nei rā, e te moana a raukaua. Tēnā, e tēnā te maunga, I te maunga a tuhirangi. He tuhirangi tēnā te pau o te tātou tupuna. Ara, kei ko nei rā, i te pai maunga a aorangi. Kei ko nei rā, i te whānau whānui o te marai o kohanui i te rā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, haere mai, haere mai, no mai. First of all, I just want to welcome you all here to this wonderful occasion. When I look at the thing of our mokopuna, our tamariki mokopuna who are here today, you know, this is for you to take on board, for you to acknowledge our roto, our way, because a lot of you whakapapa here. You may be from Te Ori Ori, you may be from Papawai, from Tūmapi here, from wherever in the way to Rapa, but you still whakapapa here. For here in this lake is where a lot of things happen. Here to the north of Way Kahununu came down into Wairarapa. But here, Kahununu came here and exchanged their waka so the Rangitane could go across to, to Waipounam. And it was done here. And so Kahununu gained the land that is here. Te noreira e te whanu. Nga mihi ki a koutou. E te whaka haere mai, haere mai, nō mai. Ki ngā... Ki ngā roto o onoki. To the hau kainga. Ka ranga moe, ka ranga moe. Thank you for the call of invitation to be... be a part of this. When we have a look over here, one of the reasons we call Tangata Whenua is because we have a whakapapa to our land. And so what's our whakapapa here? And then if you're a descendant of the land, what's your responsibility? And so it's kai tiaki because uh, that kai is a person who does something and the tiaki is caring. So what's our role in caring for the environment? Can it be understanding the environment a whole lot better than we do? 
Kia ora. Uh, my name is Andrew Rees and I'm um, a lecturer at Victoria University of Wellington and I'm here to talk about how we collect these lake sediment cores. What a lake does, regardless of whether or not we're there, is it records the history. So it's a sentinel on the landscape recording that history. The more and more I interact in these, these types of environments, I, I kind of think about this notion of reciprocity. This lake is serving to provide this, this great feature that we can tap into. So how do we pay the lake back in terms of, in terms of the favor that it's providing us for, for free? And I think, you know, these days where we come and we talk and we share that knowledge, we're actually celebrating the history of those lakes. I think it's kind of a beautiful no notion to think there are these historians all throughout New Zealand that are archiving this stuff, writing it down. And to give back, we've got to celebrate those histories by coming together and sharing what we know about these things. So I can talk to you a lot about these little insect remains that are preserved in those archives. But I can't talk to you about the value of the lakes or the, or, or the people living on those lakes now. So everyone's learning in certain respects and I think it's very useful to think about how we can give back to these, to these environments. I grew up on this lake, around this lake I should say, but I grew up on the Te Ranganui River which is the last river you cross coming down here, the last bridge. Back in those days our kai was very plentiful. I mean very plentiful. There was no set just to throw the net out there and you've got some um, some some flounder or or whatever kai that was in there. Same with the Turanganui River. The Turanganui River which flows into this lake um, we used to get I used to get we used to get white bait, we get uh, koura, we get um, uh, inanga, um, tuna, but I look at it now, my heart cries because all I see is a stream. There's nothing. There's nothing. So this is our sediment core. It's basically gravity and human operated. So these tubes, and then they're kind of tightened into place. So they stay in place, and when you're lowering this thing through through the lake water, this valve comes up, so water can be flushed out, and you lower it into the sediment, and the weight will let this barrel enter the sediment. And then, effectively, you've got this other line, watch your fingers, <laughs> and you just hammer it in. And we aim to get somewhere around a meter, two meters, uh, aiming for the last 1,000 years of that, that history. And uh, yeah, that's how the magic's done. So once we collect the cores, um, we'll just go through a bit of a demonstration of how we um, open them up and, and, and look at them and, and think about the history they contain. So here, for example, in the Wairapa and in other lakes around this area, um, being so close to things like some of the fault lines, we can also get records of um, earthquake signatures in some cases. This one here from Lake Ponui, um, which is just across the way in the foothills um, on the other side of the, the, the valley. Uh, we know that here we've probably got just on a thousand years of time. We see a lot of changes in, in the colour of the mud here. This is a lot finer, it's representing some erosion coming in from the, the catchment. We know that the timing of this is around when um, humans started to enter the landscape. There's little black flecks and chunks in here that's uh, indicative of some of the charcoal that's trapped in the in the lake core. The charcoal was a result of um, burning in the landscape and, and plants um, burning and then that smoke and charcoal and ash falls out and into the, into the lake and is recorded there. We also find evidence of things growing in the lake. So there's a little layer here. These are the remains of kakahi, the freshwater mussel shells. Um, present and layered in the lake through time as well. So we can look at how um, species, Tonga species such as kākahi, um, have changed in their abundance through time, um, through the lake, whether by finding their shell remains or using some of our environmental DNA techniques. Um, as we come to the top, we can also start to investigate how any of the um, farming and landscape changes associated with that may have influenced the lake system. So these are some of the things that we can look at and investigate using these different uh, things trapped in the mud um, through time. So such as the insect remains that um, Andrew talked about, the pollen, uh, we also have technologies that can
scan the core and capture the signature of the chlorophyll um, trapped in the in the mud core. Now the chlorophyll is is the um, the pigment that's in all anything that's green in, in the plant form has the chlorophyll in it. So that's an indicator of um, growth and productivity. So the main one we pick up out of out of these mud cores is looking at the chlorophyll uh, put in there by algae and bacteria. So we can track that and see how that has changed over time. So even at the bottom of this little bit here, there's a layer of uh, little bits of organic remains. So bits, of, possibly bits of twigs or maybe bits of um, aquatic plants that have died and, and been trapped in the mud. Um, so those are some key things we can use for understanding. If we can identify what the trees or, or plants are, we can understand that they were growing either in the lake or around the lake. But a key part of this is that that provides us something to to date, to radiocarbon date, to get an age on it. So yeah, color is one of the ways we would describe this. We kind of feel it to see the texture of the mud. Um, so this, yeah. Like I said, if it was really fine, you could roll it into a ball, but this breaks apart. Um, you can smell it. Sometimes you can smell things like sulfur, um, which gives you an idea of some of the things that are happening in the lake. Like Not much of a <coughs> distinct smell, I'd say. see them, they were explaining that they were putting the, the core jar down into the into the bottom of the lake and sort of like hammering it in with the weights and then they pulled it up and we could see some of the sample that they brought out. So it's quite exciting actually to see that. Yeah. A core from you know here versus the other side will be quite different to each other so it depends on what is your question you're trying to answer and for for this mahi we're trying to answer the question of what's the general history and and then the health of the lake over time so we don't want it from right close to the edge we want to sort of get as much of the lake story as we can rightio there is a clay layer here um and not exactly knowing what that might be related to but one thing we hope to be able to get, as I was saying um, to somebody before, is an expression of when the Royal Mahanga was diverted yeah. and what that's done to the deposition and the, the yeah. history of the lake. Um, so one thing we might see there is that if the Royal Mahanga first was feeding into Wairapa and then coming through, it should all be more clay in this lake than coarse sands. But now if the Royal Mahanga is coming straight through, we might expect coarse sand so it would be something like this that we would expect to see as a change associated with that diversion so we launched on on the um, Lake Ferry Township side of, of Onoki but that's also where the Ruamahunga River comes through and the force of the water coming through into Onoki um, <laughs> takes the fine mud and clay with it and moves it on out through into the sea and it just leaves behind the, the course of sand and gravels. So if we're trying to take a core to look at the environmental history, um, that's not the best spot because all we just get is a big core of sand and it doesn't contain all of the information we want when we're trying to build our story. So we chose to go on the far side. It's a quieter water that the mud settles out a lot better. What's unique or special about these more estuarine or lagoon type systems as opposed to your you know, more landlocked yeah, lakes. The lakes. Just from, you know, cultural and historical settings, they are a big place of Kai for a lot of people. They're a focusing point as well. So understanding their history is, is a key part of our work as part of the Lakes Reality project. But they do provide a challenge. They have got that mix of um, sea influence and freshwater influence. When we were pulling up our anchors, for example, we found hippies in the mud. They were still alive. But they're very, very soft-shelled, for example. They can't develop in the same way as they would if they're in the salt water where they've got a lot more um, calcium for their, for their shells. So they're an interesting 
transition between the land and the ocean um, and they, they tell a different story um, but they're of such a significance and there are a lot of lakes around the country but there are less of these lagoon systems and they need their story told as well. Okay. Seeing these young people here today yeah. mm. and mm. hopefully to influence them mm. that it's not all about having a good time and stuff like that. No. It's about their future. Yeah. I look back at the, the Whanganui, uh, the people from mm. Whanganui, Te Awatupua. Yeah. I look at how from a baby mm. they're learning about mm. their awa, they're learning yeah. about their whenua mm. and their waka, their waka you know, mm. I want to see that here, yeah. that we're out mm. on the lake mm. with our mukupuna. Mm. Yeah. We're both from Lake Ferry or Nuke. Our roots are tied here. I remember riding the horses out here mm. and catching all the white bait and doing the fishing. So it'd be nice to think that we can give back and hopefully get our, our beautiful tonga. Um, put our uh, Kai Pu Taiao lens on. Yep, which which is a new learning for us both. So yeah. A big part of us being here is to approach our, our our mahi in a different in a different way. Where, it's, where it becomes more practical, it becomes hands-on for our rangatahi and our mokopuna. Order is everything, eh? I think our kids, you know, we need to really educate our kids on, you know, being connected. For me personally, I'd like to move more into that direction, could a tie ao type, um, type stuff, getting our kids reconnected, learning to grow their own kai. Tētahi moi moi ya, that's one dream that I have for sure. Yeah, get our kids involved. Well, I'm home after 25 years of moving around and thinking, what the heck am I doing? I need to come home and um, add value and contribute right here. And what a beautiful spot. Muri order. Muri order.